Now we're at the point where you want to take a song that you've made using your setup template, which is the is a duplicate of your master template, but you make everything there, you save it, and now you want to drag it in, okay? Because you did all the hard work in your setup template, and now you want to use the master template that houses your set list for that week's worship experience uh, to basically add data to it. And I kind of want to show you how to do that so that you can see it in real time, okay? So in this particular example, we're going to use the blessing, all right? And so I want you to see how everything is closed up right now. And I want you to understand that, you know, when you drag it in, uh, it's going to open up a lot of folders and it's going to look a little hectic, but I'm going to help you and show you how to clean that up. All right. So in this example, we're going to use the blessing. And how we do that is we add a locator, as we talked about before. So I'm going to hit delete just so I can show you again how to do that. It's very simple. Uh, let's just say we want the song to start on 301. What we're going to do is right click on 301 and do add locator. OK. Um, and so now we want to add the blessing. Now you'll notice there's a, a white line that's appearing and that white line means that the blessing is actually going to drop over top of the songs that are already added in this arrangement setup. Okay. And so it's going to look like you have basically two arrangements over top of each other. So the blessing is going to be over top of the arrangement that you already have in this template, but I'm going to show you how to clean it up. All right. So we're going to drag that in. We're going to do drop on 301 because we want the next song to start and you're going to be like, man, it didn't, that didn't happen. Okay. But we want to close everything up like we talked about. And so now, as you can see, you see that we have the blessing that dropped in over top of, I will call upon the Lord and your great name. Okay. And so we want to copy all that data over to 301 and we want to clean up our template. All right. So what I've noticed is copying MIDI, and copying audio files, it gets a little hectic. And so a workaround that I've done to uh, kind of mitigate that is I just copy a portion of the track at one time. OK, so what I'll do in this particular example is I'll copy the tempo track all the way across. And I'll grab all the audio files. OK, and I'll do a command X. And what this does is this cuts the information uh, from the template and then I'll go to the tempo track where I want the song to actually start and I'll do a command V and you see everything copied in nicely. Okay. And so just to make sure everything copied in on the 31, which it didn't. Okay. I'm going to pull everything back and make sure it's all lined up really nicely. Okay. And now it's on the 301. All right. So we still have some things that we have to drag over. OK, and that's the control channel. And so what I'll do here is I'll grab the entire control channel, select it, do a command X to cut it. Go to the control channel. All right. Make sure I'm on 301. And I'll do a command V to paste that in. All right. So you're still like, man, I got a whole bunch of information and, and stuff up here that makes my my session look a little, you know, a little messy. So all I do is I grab the session that copied in over top. All right. I'll start at the guide track and I'll go to the bottom of that particular session that drug in via the blessing and I'll just delete it. And now everything is all back looking uh, nice and linear from left to right. All right. And so now I'm dragging this in. I'm setting up my setup for my worship set for Sunday and we literally go through the same process. OK, so we make sure that's set to leader. OK, and I want to make sure that all my um, I wanna make sure all my locators are copied in. This is what I'm doing, the pre work to get my set list together, by the way. So I hit play. And you see the metronome track started. All right. And you see all my locators are adding. OK, but because I'm doing the the setup portion, what I'll do is I'll take leader off and I'll let everything record in uh, fast so all my locators can be added. As you can see, I brought my intro track over. I'm sorry, my locators track here, this white track here so that I would always have all the sections to my song. So I don't have to go back and rename my locators every time I do a session. OK, so as you can see, it's adding a locator everywhere that I have an add locator on the control track. OK, and it's going to do this all the way through the entire record. And because I have the tempo sped up, 
okay what it's doing is adding the locators quickly so i don't have to wait the actual seven minutes of the song okay so we're going to let this all go through and you're going to see how adding the locators the way that we're doing it it's really expediting our time all right and so because we built everything uh in a setup template all we had to do is drag this song in to our master template and you can see it 100 percent functional and working okay so we're going to continue to let this kind of copy all the way through we have just a little bit left as you can see the locators are still dragging in i still have my looper channel that's available all right and as you can see every eight bars there is a loop icon that's enabled okay but we're still not at that place yet i just want to make sure you see every aspect of this being function we're almost at the end and i'm glad you all are able to see this in real time you see i got this stop command here at the very end uh, and if all goes well, it will stop um, right there. Now, for this particular track, I didn't make any preset pro presenter or light key triggers. That's why none of, nothing drug in on those particular channels. But if you made them previously in your setup template, when you drag it to your master library, it'll all drag in as well. And as you can see, we're at the end and it's going to go stop. Perfect. All right. And so in real time, I want you to see again, I talked about the eight bars or the four bars or the six bars for arrangement looper to where you can loop anything on command. OK, so I want to just kind of give that an example. All right. So let's go back to setting this to a leader so that we can get back to the original tent, the original tempo. So the worship leaders just singing, uh, they're flowing. And again, this is to eliminate having to press something on the downbeat. OK, and what I mean by that is, is that as you're playing, if you want that section to repeat. All right. And you want to be able to jump back to a locator. There's a couple of ways that I'm kind of talking about. You have to press this in real time. One, two, three. And so for that to happen, you have to press that in time and imagine having to play and press that uh, last locator in time. OK. Uh, that kind of creates kind of a little bit of pressure. And so the what I built is this uh, plugin called Arrangement Looper. And what you're able to do is now hit any key at any point. And you see now I just hit the R command and it literally uh, triggered the loop function. And I didn't have to worry about doing it in time. All right. And so now if the worship leader is flowing uh, and they're ready to go to the next part again i don't have to have the pressure of wanting to hit it at the right point so it can go back to that start point okay and so let's just say this worship leader says okay i'm ready to go on to the next part of the song all i have to do is hit r because that's how i have it midi mapped and it'll go on to the next section all right and i did that with no pressure okay again for the individuals that are using uh, ableton 10 standard and not able to intend sweet okay we have that repeat line okay and all i got to do is go to my session okay grab a repeat and we're gonna drop that in we're gonna drop that in wherever i want that to go okay and we have to remember that this is a uh a four bar situation so um we want to make sure that we drop it in on the measure before we want it to actually happen and because I'm using Ableton 10 standard, I'm going to unmap this for example purposes. I'm going to go delete. OK, and I am going to MIDI map my repeat MIDI channel and I'm going to repeat. I'm going to map that to R. OK. All right. So now I'm turning the key command MIDI section off. And as you can see, I have it set to off right now. Everything's set to off right now. And as you can see, the track is going to play straight through that MIDI command because I have that MIDI channel off. All right. But in this case, um, if the worship leader is letting me know uh, as they're singing that they want to repeat that section, I'll hit play for application purposes. All right. 
And so the, the worship leader is letting me know, hey, I want to repeat that part. Notice the repeat command is off. When I hit R, it turns it on. OK. And with it being on, now it's going to send a MIDI signal to, to this to the song. And it's going to go back to the last known locator. OK. And one thing I want you to also notice that you so you'll know it's working. OK. Is that. You notice when it gets to the repeat MIDI command, this area right here is going to green up. And that's letting us know that it's going back to um, that last known locator. That's why it's important to have locators. Without a locator, it doesn't have a, a place to respond to. All right. And so now, um, again, to make sure that we see that this is a functional asset, I'm going to turn this off because the worship leader told me that they want to go on to the next part of the song. And it's literally going to keep going through the rest of the progression of the song. And you're going to see right now we're in this section right here. And it's going to continue uh, past 354 going forward. And now you see that this is a functional template. Okay. So I wanted to make sure you all was able to see that.